Hi, welcome back. Today, we are talking a little bit about some of the wildlife here in Virginia, uh, specifically from the colonists' perspective. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, the colonists are experiencing when they first get here uh, that you know, are, are kind of new to them, uh, exciting to them, uh, and some things are, are things that they're very familiar with, but um, they still cause them to uh, to marvel. You know, like, for instance, they talk about just enormous oysters. Well, they know what an oyster is, uh, but they've never seen them the size of the ones that they're finding here. Likewise with uh, the, the crabs. They talk about a, a crab that could feed four men. Uh, enormous sturgeon that they're pulling out of the rivers. Uh, the gargantuan size of the trees. You know, at one point, uh, Captain John Smith saying, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, the trees are, are three fathom and more in circumference. And another point saying the average pine is a hundred feet of trunk before the lowest branch. Um, you know, and so they, they have, again, they have reference for, for what the, those flora and fauna are. Uh, but they're just kind of amazed at the scale uh, of these creatures in an environment uh, that has not been as uh, industrially harvested, essentially. Uh, and then you've got things that they're less familiar with, so new animals and new birds and things. Now, you know, if you see, if you've never seen a cardinal before, you're going to know that it's a bird, but you're still going to be excited about, look at this, you know, bright red, you know, very exciting looking bird. Uh, things like uh, the opossum. And we get a very a very fun description of the opossum from again Captain John Smith, um, who doesn't you know they, they don't have them in England. He can't say an opossum and have people know what in the world he's talking about. Uh, but he is relating it to things that are familiar to the English experience, and so he, he describes it as, as having uh, you know a, a face like a swine, uh, the bigness of a cat. Uh, the tail of a rat and a baggage under its belly in which it uh, uh, carries and suckles its young. Um, so again, all concepts that are, are, are familiar, essentially, uh, that he can relate it to. But uh, we've been getting a lot of questions here at the museum the last few, uh, the last few days. What is that? What is that noise? Uh, and of course, that's these guys, the uh, periodic cicadas. Uh, now, cicadas are found just about everywhere in the world. Lots of different species. There's at least one native species of cicada uh, in England. Uh, but most everywhere in the world, they're, they're annual. They may uh, spend up to eight or nine years underground uh, in their nymph stage, but every year there's at least a few coming up. Uh, but North America appears to be, oops, there he goes, <laughs> um, North America appears to be the only place uh, that has these, these periodic cicadas. 13-year uh, and 17-year broods in particular, we see, uh, again, it's, it's just trillions coming out at the same time. Uh, and they create a little bit different sound, at least here, the annual cicadas that we get uh, there's a cadence, there's a rise and fall to their song. You can often pick out individual insects calling to each other because there's not so many around at any one time, usually. Um, and it, the, the, the manner in which they're, they're vocalizing, it makes it clear that's some kind of critter, it's some kind of bug. But this just kind of constant tone. Uh, you know, it's modern day, we get a lot of folks asking, is, is that some kind of machinery? Is that some kind of siren? Like, what is that? We live in a world where there are many things that generate a constant, never-ending tone. Uh, but, you know, these folks are, are living on, on a planet that has yet to see an air conditioning compressor. It does not have interstate noise. You know, they, they don't have a frame of reference. What what could be causing that constant unmodulated tone, right? Um, and who knows, perhaps perhaps they did figure it out quite fast. Uh, but you can imagine, especially with such long intervals, if every year you're seeing annual cicadas, just like they're already familiar with in England, is there a reason to jump to a conclusion right off the bat that, oh, 
I suggest a different kind of cicada when you're already seeing the same thing here. Um, again, just this 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 massive eruption of bugs. If you're in one of the places where, and I mean, we've got they came out, started coming out weeks ago, and we, the holes are everywhere in the ground here. If you're in one of the places where they're emerging, it may seem like some sort of biblical plague event. You know, the ground is just boiling with bugs. And if you're not in one of the places where that eruption happened, if you didn't get to see the bugs coming up and the exoskeletons as they molt all over the place, if all your, all your only exposure is the sound, you have even less frame of reference as to where it's coming from. Um, based on some just quick, uh, you know, um, estimates on our end, we're thinking it's possible maybe there was an eruption as early as 1608 when these guys were here. Um, uh, and thus far, they, there may be an account. I, I've not run across it yet. We'll keep looking. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just kind of crazy to contemplate what their thought process might have been as they're coming to grips with <laughs> the howling uh, tone of the cicadas. Uh, so yeah, just kind of a cool thing to contemplate. Again, these folks coming into what for them is a very new world uh, with lots of new and exciting things. And most of these things, again, they've got some kind of reference. Yes, the trees are amazingly big, but they're trees. They know what they are. The oysters are big. The possum is weird. Uh, but they have some frame of reference. But We thought it was interesting. Like, so we've been getting a lot of questions about it here at the museum. We hope you guys found this inter interesting and thanks for joining us today.